What's up, Custom Family? How is everyone doing? We want to say hi to all of our Upstate campuses. So give a shout out real quick. Say we love you. Say hi right now. One, two, three. We love you guys. We love you. Love you. Hey, we have, it's my honor. We've got an amazing, amazing guest speaker tonight. Um, Few, a few reasons why he's amazing. He spells his name the same way I spell my name, which is kind of cool. Um, yeah, BFFs forever. Um, we we kind of, his name is John Brown. We, we grew up together in ministry. We both went to the same college, lived on the same floor, um, and just got to know each other pretty pretty well. And then we went into ministry, not together, but kind of went our own ways. And, and uh, God allowed our paths to cross in just a lot of different mentoring circles. And uh, he's always been a trusted friend an amazing friend, and uh, someone I've always looked up to in ministry, and uh, so I wanted one of my friends to come speak to this family, my family, our family. And so will you do just a giant, giant custom round of applause, even from, even from the camera, give, a, give, it up, give it up for John Brown, Pastor John Brown, all the way from Wisconsin. <laughs> Oh man, thank you so much. I'm super pumped to be here. Uh, I, I really believe in the principle of giving honor where honor is due. And uh, Pastor John was really nice to give me such a huge welcome. But the, true, the truth is, the true story is that Pastor John uh, is someone that I look up to. Um, when I came into college, he was a year older than me, so that means he's ancient. Um, I'm old too, I'm right there with him. But he was someone that I looked up to that welcomed me into college. And maybe you don't know this, but around the country, Pastor John and his wife Kelly are, are they're famous. Maybe you don't know that. Maybe you don't know exactly who they are or you, you kind of take them for granted because they're your youth pastor and they're here. But people look up to them in a huge way. They look up to them because of the way that they love students, the way that they love custom students on all the campuses. Uh, they look up to Pastor John and Kelly because of the way they lead. And, and I want you to know as their friend that they are the real deal. The Pastor John you see on the stage uh, is the real deal. He is the real, the, the person you see up here, the way he loves Jesus, the way he prays, the way he worships isn't just a show, like it's the real deal. And I just want to give honor to them. Can we do that right now? Yeah. They are heroes. They're heroes. There's a lot of youth pastors, youth leaders around the country, around the nation that look up to them and the things that they're doing. And you guys have something special here at the Mount Pleasant campus, all of you coming together and all of you who are on all the other campuses. Uh, you have something so special going on here, and I want you not to take it for granted. And my goal tonight is to make the name of Jesus famous. My goal tonight is to motivate you, to preach to you, to bring the house down. And, and maybe, maybe you're, I know probably from Pastor John and his preaching, you're maybe used to this a little bit. But where I come from in, in Kenosha, Wisconsin, um, you might be able to tell that I have a little bit of an accent. We're actually real close to Chicago, so we're part of the Chicago suburbs. And where I come from, I've been trying to teach the students because they kind of get a little bit quiet when I'm preaching. And, and I've been trying to teach them, and they're getting it, to make some noise. So on all of our campuses and right here live, I want to encourage you to, to kind of shout me down a little bit. I already got a couple of people that are ready to do that right here in this place. But I want to encourage you to shout me down, meaning like well, if I say something good, you say, that's good. And I want you to kind of say it loud so I can hear you. You know what? And, and maybe like your neighbor isn't saying anything. You just elbow them in the ribs. You have my permission right now. Elbow them in the ribs. Go for it. Really good. Say, come on, that was good. Or, or one of my personal favorites, while I'm preaching, if you find a point that is like, man, that was wow. Like, I needed that. Say, come on, somebody. Can you practice that? Come on, somebody. So here's the deal. I preach better when you shout me down. If I stink at preaching, it's your fault. Just saying. So turn to your neighbor and say, it's your fault. All right. So I need your help. I need your help. I'm going to bring it. When I, if I start getting excited and I start yelling a little bit, it's not because I'm angry. It just means I'm excited and I'm ready for someone to go, come on, somebody. All right. So 
I just want to introduce myself a little bit. I love, with all of my heart, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Anybody in the house? Come on, somebody. I love, I am a huge fan of Dr. Pepper. Any Dr. Pepper fans? Oh, man. I love me some Dr. Pepper. And I know this is going to sound like I like sugar a lot, but I really do like sugar a lot. I like nerds candy. Any nerds? Come on, somebody. Oh, I'm ready to go out to the cafe right now and pick me up some of those. I, those are some, come on, somebody. So some of you are like, some of you are having your own personal revival right now as I mentioned those things, and that's a good thing. We haven't even gotten started. I want to introduce you to my family. Here's a, mo- a few more of my favorite things, but up on the screen, uh, I have a picture of my three girls and my wife. They're back home in Kenosha, Wisconsin, right now praying for you. Uh, my oldest daughter, Brianna, is seven and, and she prayed for you by name, uh, Custom Student Ministry. She prayed for you, and she's praying that God does something great. She just uh, uh, kind of like Skype or FaceTime, but Uvu, because my FaceTime wasn't working last night, and she prayed over Uvu while I was sitting in the airport for you guys. And I believe that when my daughter prays, something's about to happen. Come on, somebody. My daughter... My daughter Isabella is five, and then my daughter Brooklyn. My daughter Brooklyn has me all sorts of wrapped around her finger. Um, They are the most adorable. I tell them every night that I love them, that they're the apple of my eye, that there's nothing that they could ever do to make me stop loving them, no matter what they do, that I'm always going to love them. And uh, we we sing a little song together from the book, I'll Love You Forever. Maybe you know that book, but uh, I sing that to them. They are... Uh, the best thing that's ever happened to me besides my wife, my wife Janet, is praying for you, Custom Student Ministries, across all the campuses, praying for you and about 30 other, my mom, other students. I have middle and high school students fasting and praying for Custom Student Ministries and what I believe God wants to speak to you tonight. You guys are awesome. I love this. Pastor John, this is an awesome group. Uh, Yeah, so tonight... Uh, I want to introduce you also uh, as part of my family. Back home, my family, our student ministry, H2O Youth, is, is meeting right now in just about an hour or two, uh, both our middle school and high school. And we also are a multi-site youth ministry. And we have about the same size group. So that's kind of like your family back in Wisconsin in the Chicago area, uh, H2O, and they're praying for you. I kind of feel like we're a big family. So I just want to show you a picture up on the screen and introduce you to them. They are worshiping and praying and seeking God. God for Custom Student Ministries in South Carolina. So tonight, the title of my message, if you're taking notes, you probably got one of these when you walked in. You can pull these out. I would encourage you to take notes. When you take notes uh, and write things down, you increase your chances of going to heaven. It's true. (laughs) Just saying. I mean, I, I haven't read that in the Bible, but at least that's what I think. It does help you remember it, and it helps you take it with you. It makes it portable. It makes it memorable. It makes it something that sticks in your head more. So when Pastor John preaches, he's going to preach far better than I do because he's an amazing communicator. I would encourage you to be people that take notes, all right? So we're going to take notes, and the title of my message is Make Jesus Famous. And you got one of these when you walked in. At the end tonight, you're going to write down five names on this card that you're going to be taking the next month to pray for, five names that you're going to fast for, five names that you're going to commit to inviting, and you're going to make Jesus famous in their lives. And I just believe, just like I've been praying, and I'm on the plane, I think people were looking at me weird on the airplane last night, because I had the worship tunes cranked, I was listening to Hillsong Young and Free, and I had my eyes closed, and I'm like pounding on the seat in front of me, and the two guys on the side of me are probably thinking, this guy is jacked up. And, and I was just jamming. And I thought, I swear people were looking at me weird. It was like God's presence was right there in the plane with me. I had people just kind of staring at me. I was like, man, I don't know if they can see Jesus. Uh, but that song, Take the World and Give Me Jesus, I just felt like I had my own little personal revival going on right there in the plane. And God just gave me a picture of custom student ministries filling up every one of the chairs. Look at the empty spots around you. Look at the empty spots over on this side, on this side, on the other campuses. Look at the empty spots there. What if, just what if, we made the name of Jesus famous over the course of the next month? And what if every one of these seats was full? What if not just three or 400 students converged on one night, but what if 1,000 students from all around the area and all the campuses came together 
And they made the name of Jesus famous together in this room. Imagine your friend sitting next to you and walking down to the front saying, I want to give my life to Jesus. I want him to be made famous in my life. See, when I was in high school, I had a challenge before me in high school. I really cared a lot about what people thought about me. I hit my freshman year and I played football, I played baseball, and I played basketball. Football was my main sport. But for me, being a Christian kid in a public school playing sports, I started to get confused as to, should I make the name of Jesus famous or should I make my name famous? Is it about me scoring touchdowns? Is it about me getting more Twitter followers, more likes on my Instagram pics? Is it about me winning the prom court? What is it all about? And I started to get confused and get tugged this way, like making my name famous or making the name of Jesus famous. And I was, I was conflicted. And this is a generation I don't know about here in South Carolina and, and in the area. Area, but back home in Kenosha, Wisconsin, our students are conflicted. I, I see students that are talking about and bragging about the number of tweets and retweets that they got. I see students that are talking about the number of followers that they have on Instagram, and it becomes very quickly about us and making our name famous, having more friends. Did I make it on the prom court? We just had prom. I had several of our students, so that was, they made t-shirts for themselves. It's this big, huge deal. It's about my name famous. Or is it about Jesus' name famous? See, come on, somebody. I want to say something to you tonight. I think in a culture of selfies, I know you just, uh, just did kind of a message on that a couple months ago, uh, but I know in a culture of selfies, it can be real easy to forget who it's really about. It's, it's not about me. Turn to your neighbor and say, it's not about you. Now turn to your other neighbor and say, it's not about me. So I just figured I'd have a little bit of fun tonight in a, in a selfie nation. I figured we'd have a little bit of fun tonight and show you some, some selfies. So I just kind of went creeping on Instagram, for real, did today. And, uh, and, and so I pulled up Pastor John. He doesn't do a lot of selfies. He kind of does the, I'm going to put my cute kid in front of me selfie his daughter Paisley, and so then that makes it acceptable for a youth pastor to ha take a selfie because I got my cute daughter in front of me. I've t I know that because I've done it before. This, this is what I call a throwback to the days of Moses selfie, a T-B-T-D-O-M, throwback to the days of Moses selfie. I want you to see Pastor John back in high school. He just put, yeah. You can thank me later. You can thank me later. That's what I'm talking about. Throw back to the, you can hashtag that, T-B-T-D-O-M. Throw back to the days of Moses selfie. And then we have Andy Gill from our James Island campus. Any James Island campus people here? I hear you, I hear you, I hear you. This is what I call the selfie crew. You get your crew around you and you take a selfie. And then we have Brian Crittenden from the West Ashley campus. Any West Ashley people in the house? All right, all right. This is called the hipster haircut selfie. I was really disappointed when Brian cut off his hair. He, he said in, in this picture, do you like it or not? And I was like, yes, yes, yes. He already cut it off, man. I, I, I'm, I'm just saying, Pastor Brian, Brian, you need to bring back the hair. A haircut, hipster haircut selfie. And then we have Josh Ray from right here at the Mount Pleasant campus. And this is what I call the go hard or go home selfie. You know what I'm saying? Go hard or go home. And then we have uh, Robert Knight with his WCW selfie. Woman Crush Wednesday. There we go. It's all about the selfie, selfie nation. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. I think, uh, obviously, this was for fun. But sometimes we get wrapped up and we forget who it's really all about. And if we could get tonight that it isn't about making John Brown's name famous or you insert your name in. If it's, it isn't about making my name famous, but it's about making his name famous then we can flip everything upside down. We could flip this world upside down. We could flip our high schools and our middle schools upside down. And that's exactly what I've been praying along with 30 other people that God would do right here at your school, in your job, 
in your family. When I was in, I, I shared a little bit about when I got into high school and, um, and, the, and the, the tug and the pull, uh, and I, I, I lost my purpose. It became all about me being the best football player. It became all about me scoring more touchdowns. That was before the days of Twitter and Instagram. It became all about me getting a scholarship to go play football. It became about me having the most friends and me being popular. And I, I, I started to lose the battle of making the name of Jesus famous. And I started to try and make my name famous. And I remember getting to my senior year and feeling purposeless, feeling empty, feeling dry, feeling like I knew God, but I didn't feel him in my life anymore. Maybe you felt those feelings. Because they become all about the wrong things. And I remember sitting in the library of my high school, a senior year, about two months before I was graduating, and I was just sitting there working on homework. I wasn't thinking about God. I wasn't thinking about anything like that. And all of a sudden, God, just like he did on the airplane, invaded my space right there in my high school library. And I literally started crying for my friends, for my classmates, for my teammates that didn't know Jesus. I don't know where it came from. I wasn't even praying for them. And I, it's like he just dumped on me right there in the library. And I'm like wiping my tears. and like, oh, man, I can't do this, man. This is not cool in the library. Like, God, you can do that stuff at church, but don't be showing up in my high school, you know? Don't, don't make me cry right here. I got a reputation to uphold. And I just started to, 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 my heart was breaking, and I realized that I had done absolutely nothing. I was about to graduate, and my school was not one bit different. It was not changed whatsoever because I was there. I had made no difference. I had led no one to Jesus. I had not made the name of Jesus famous. I had just tried to make the name of John famous. And that reality hit me like a ton of bricks, and I felt so convicted. I felt so ashamed. And in that instant, see, God doesn't shame us. That's, that's what the enemy does. In that instant, God said, but school's not done yet. You still have two months left. Pick yourself up and make the most of these last two months. And so that's what I did. I just started saying, I'm going to make the name of Jesus famous. I began to pray. I began to fast for my school. I began to pray for my best friend that played on the football team and blocked for me on the line. I be, his name was Damien. I began to pray. And I had been trying to get him to come to church with me, come to youth group with me all throughout high school. And he kept on rejecting me. And I said, I'm going to make, that's my mission. If I don't make any other difference, I'm going to for sure see my best friend come to know Jesus. And you know what happened? He didn't come to know Jesus by the time that I graduated from high school. And I got a bit discouraged, but I didn't give up. And I brought him to summer camp. Can I just give a plug for summer camp right now? Man, if you've never been to summer camp, you don't even know. I've been going to summer camp since, I'm, since I was 13 years old, and I'm 36, and I've not stopped going. That's a lot of years of summer camp, 23 years of summer camp that I've been going to, and I'm so addicted to summer camp that I'm not going to miss another summer camp. I'll be going to summer camp until I'm 72 years old because I love summer camp that much, and I want to see students love summer camp because that's where you fall in love with Jesus, and guess what? That's where my best friend, Damian Schlosser, blocked from me on the line, lifted weights with me, came down, and it was over on this side of the stage. He walked down uh, with me, and he, he, I remember the preacher was preaching. It was Thursday night. It was one of the last nights of service. And he walked down to the front. He raised his hand. He walked down to the front. And I walked down with him. And my best friend gave his life to Jesus Christ. And can I tell you, that was the best feeling that I have ever experienced in my life. I've never experienced a feeling like that in my entire life. And I became addicted to making the name of Jesus famous. There was an addiction that happened inside of me. I was like, man, I'm going to do this over and over and over and over again. And guess what I get to do with my life? Make the name of Jesus famous wherever I go, where, wherever I'm preaching. I get to make the name of Jesus famous in Kenosha, Wisconsin, in Burlington, Wisconsin, in the Chicagoland area, in the Milwaukee area. I get to make the name of Jesus famous. And I love it. And guess what happened that summer? We did a drama production Kind of like Robert Knight, you know, the, the resident Jesus. Uh, he, 
he, he's, a, he's a part of, of that production. We did a production kind of like that at our church, and I was a drug dealer. I'd never done drugs in my life, but I was the drug dealer in the play. And I invited my high school principal, Mr. Ted May, to come. And he came. But the crazy part was is that he raised his hand, and he walked down to the front, and I was standing right up front, me and my bad old drug dealer self. He walked up to me and my brother, and my principal in my high school, Mr. Ted May, gave his life to Jesus. I got to lead him to Jesus that night. Man, I just started, something was stirring inside of me. Like, I, I want to do this with the rest of my life. I want to make the name of Jesus famous. A couple of years later, I'm in college. Uh, I'm going to college with Pastor John. And, uh, and God opened up the door through my high school principal. He said, why don't you come in and bring this worship thing and kind of the Bible club that you have going on into the high school. I'll open up the high school auditorium. It was an auditorium about the size of the campus here live. And, and, and so we went to the high school auditorium and we just started having this worship night called Monday Night Jam. Every Monday night, it's kind of like one night, but we did it weekly, every Monday night. We had Monday Night Jam, and we just worshiped as a bunch of high school students and a couple of college students, and people started coming, and the captain of the football team gave his life to Jesus. The captain of the basketball team gave his life to Jesus. The captain uh, of the cheerleading squad gave her life to Jesus. All these influencers started coming to Jesus, and, and since we're in the hallways of the school and the music's flowing out into the hallways at our public high school, people just started coming in. People were getting healed, like... Like, we'd pray for them and they'd get healed. Like, the stuff that you read in the Bible where you're like, does that really happen today? It was like happening in my high school. And we were shocked. Like, this happens? Like, we, we pray for people and we don't expect anything to happen, but it was happening. And we started, like, not having room. And 600 people later, 600 people jammed into the auditorium of our 1,000-person high school, 600 people coming. One of the guys that I went to high school with a couple years before that, who was one of the biggest drug dealers in our town of Delano, walked in. I don't know why he was even at the school, but he, he had graduated a couple years before that, plus he was a drug dealer. Like, they shouldn't have let him in. He came in. And he walked down to the front, and I got to pray with him and lead him to Jesus. Making the name of Jesus famous. Why do I tell you that story? Because I want to give you a picture. I don't know what you think is possible for your middle school or for your high school, but I want to give you a picture of what is possible. I want to give you a picture of what is happening and what has happened. I want to give you a picture of what I've experienced, because I want you to become addicted to making the name of Jesus famous famous. But sometimes, so many of us are just like I was all throughout high school. You're pulled in the direction of, do I make the name of Jesus famous or do I make my name famous? I, I don't want to lose my friends. I don't want to be the loner that sits at the lunch table alone. Like if I'm too radical, if I talk about Jesus, if I try and make the name of Jesus famous, like I'm going to sit alone, Pastor John. Like I don't want to do that. I'm trying to build a reputation. I'm trying to make a name for myself. I'm trying to get more Twitter followers. That's just going to lose me some people that, that I have influence with. So making the name of Jesus famous or make my name famous, I think, I think I'm going to go with making my name famous. And we wrestle and we struggle. And some of you are going, well, I, I don't even have a famous name. Like, I, that's not even me. But you know that you want to fit in and you know that you want to be liked and and maybe you've tried to make the name of Jesus famous at your school and you've talked about it and it's been a bad experience. Or you've, like me, invited your friend over and over and over again to one night and they haven't come. And I'm just here to say, don't give up. Don't stop. Because Jesus will be made famous whether you are going to step up and make him famous or not. And he wants to do that right here. So I want us to pray, and then we're going to jump into God's Word and find three guys about your age that had the same struggle, the same wrestle. So God, I pray right now tonight that you'd speak to us through Jan Daniel chapter 3, that your Word would come alive. This isn't a story about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. This isn't a story about Nebuchadnezzar. This, God, is a story about us. So God, invade this space, invade every campus and that you would speak to us through your word, that the words 
from your word would jump off the page and they'd grab a hold of our hearts and they'd rip us open like it says in your word, lay us bare like a surgeon's scalpel and they'd do surgery on our hearts and show us, God, if there's anything inside of us that's offensive where we're maybe trying to make our name famous ahead of making your name famous. And God, that you'd inspire us, give us faith that you can do the same. Take the world but give us Jesus. Take all the stuff that we thought was important and just give us you, Jesus. For our friends, for our school, for our workplaces, for our neighborhoods, for our family. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, amen. 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 All right, you ready to shout down? All right, we're going to take a look at Daniel chapter 3. And I'm going to set up the story for you here. In Daniel chapter 3, we see these, these guys, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. You probably heard this story. For those of you who haven't, it's the guys that were thrown into the fiery furnace. They have a Veggie Tales out about it. They, there's even songs about it. Okay, and and so just to set this story up, these three guys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, along with their friend Daniel, are part of of this Christian community, God's chosen people, and they were stolen, kidnapped out of their land of Israel, and they were brought into this foreign land. It would kind of be like as if you, uh, right here in America, you're going about your business, you're maybe out of one night, you're hanging with your friends, you guys are, are, are loving Jesus, and all of a sudden the Russians come out of nowhere and they kidnap us all, all, all of us across all the campuses, back to Russia, to the motherland. <laughs> and they kidnap us there, and, and we don't know the language, We don't know the people. We're not sleeping in our own beds. We're kind of in these prison camp type things. And and we're trying to figure out what's going on. We can't understand what they're saying. And they can't really understand what we're saying. And and they have these weird traditions and these this different religion, and we're just, it's just this mass chaos. And they're brought into this. And these three guys, along with their friend Daniel, are chosen. Kind of like royalty. They're chosen, and they're saying, You guys are the the really good looking, you're smart, you're bright. We want you to come into the king king's palace, Nebuchadnezzar. We want you to come into his palace and we want you to learn our ways. And so that's kind of what happens in this story. And in Daniel chapter three, King Nebuchadnezzar, he really liked himself a lot. Like if you, you maybe know like some people that like to take a lot of selfies, don't point. Okay. You know, some people that like to take a lot of selfies, you're pointing. And, 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 you know, I, one of my favorites is the young ladies who take a lot of selfies, and then they put some Bible verse with it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know, I know. You're thinking of someone right now. H- hashtag spiritual selfie, right? And so they, they, but Nebuchadnezzar, he is the king of selfies. He really wanted to make his name famous. He really thought that he was something. He wanted people not only to, to say, you're the king, but he wanted people to worship him. So he builds the world's largest selfie, 90 feet tall, a 90-foot selfie of himself. And then he gathered everyone from all the campuses or all the provinces, and he said, we're all coming together for one night. Not really one night, but we're all coming together and all of you need to come and you all need to bow down to my selfie. We're not worthy. And so he brings them all in and he says, as soon as the music plays, the band hits it. As soon as they're, uh, they're just rocking on the guitar, um, as soon as they're rocking on the drums, as soon as they're rocking on the instruments, what you're going to do is you're going to bow down. As soon as the music hits, everyone is going to bow down to my giant self me. You guys ready for this? Ready, set, go. Bow down to me. And so they all bow down. Everybody, like thousands and thousands of people are all right there. And the band hits and they all bow down except for three guys. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They bow down. They stand up. See, here's the deal. When you stand up in a crowd, when you stand up at your school, when you stand up for God, when you stand up, you stand out. People can't help but notice that you're standing up. They can't help but notice. You see, when you just blend in and you look like the world, when you blend in, you know, we're, we live in a culture where everyone wants to be different, everyone wants to be unique, everyone wants to be original, one of a kind. And yet we all end up looking like each other, don't we? You ever notice that? Everybody wears the same pairs of shoes, the same bands. Everybody wears the same brand of clothing. 
And maybe, you know, you have your subgroups and all that, but they all look alike. But when you stand up, and I'm not just talking about wearing different clothes, but when you stand up, you stand out. And so we find Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego uh, in this place. And you know what? It would have been easy for them to blend in. You think about it for just a second if you're in their shoes. They're in a new place. Their parents aren't around. At least we don't think they are. They could have just been like, well, I'm not going to get in trouble for this, so I might as well just bow down. I'm just going to be like everybody else. I, I don't, I'm not trying to make myself different right now. I'm in a foreign land. I got people that hate me. I don't even understand the language. I can just kind of, you know, I can get halfway down. I can just kind of blend in a little bit because I don't want to get myself into any sort of trouble here. I'm just trying to not get myself killed. They had a lot of reasons, but they stood up. And so in verse 16, uh, we find it says uh, they, they stood out. Like King Nebuchadnezzar is ticked off. You ever seen that look on your mom's face when you know you were supposed to do something that she told you to do, but you didn't do it? You know that look, right? It's the crazy eye look. She gives you the crazy eyes. You know you're in trouble. They got the crazy eye look from King Nebuchadnezzar. It's, and it says, uh, King Nebuchadnezzar called him to the carpet. He's like, get over here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered to King Neb Nebuchadnezzar. Your threat means nothing to us. He said, if you guys don't bow down, if you don't get on your face, I'm going to give you one more chance. If you don't get down, then I'm going to throw you into this furnace, this blazing hot furnace. You're going to burn to death. That's a little motivation right there. Like, I can think of a lot of ways to die. Burning to death is not one of them. You know what I'm saying? No, thank you. And so he says, and they say to him, your threat means nothing to us. If you throw us in the fire, the God that we serve can rescue us from your roaring furnace and anything else you might cook up. O oh, king, the God that we serve. I'm just wondering, are you serving yourself? Are you trying to make your name famous? Or are you serving King Jesus? Are you serving a God that's bigger than you, that's higher than you, the God that you just worshiped. They said, the God that we serve will rescue us. But then check this out. But even if he doesn't, but even if, sometimes I think that we, we think, well, you know, God's gonna do something. God, I know that you wanna save my friend Damien. I know, God, that you wanna do something at my school, and then he doesn't do it. And then we give up. I gave up on God for three and a half years of high school because he wasn't answering my prayers. But you know what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said? I'm not gonna hang out over here about making my name famous, about me, me kind of just blending in with the crowd and not getting myself killed. But even if he doesn't show up, I will still make the name of Jesus famous. I will still stand up. But even if he doesn't, it wouldn't make a bit of difference, O king. I think we need some people in this place, come on somebody, that will say, but even if, even if I get made fun of, even if I'm, I'm sitting all alone at the lunch table, even if I have no friends, even if I lose some followers, even if I am going to follow Jesus, even if I'm going to stand out, even if I'm going to stand up for what I believe, even if my friend doesn't come to know Jesus, I'm still going to keep on going. I'm still going to keep on serving him with everything I got inside of me. But even if, O King, he doesn't, it wouldn't make a bit of difference we still wouldn't serve your gods or worship the gold statue that you set up. Verse 26. I'm going to stop right there for a second. What happens is they don't bow down, and King Nebuchadnezzar takes all three of these guys, and he says, I'm so ticked that you are not worshiping my giant selfie and giving me 10 million likes right now that I am going to throw you in the fiery furnace and we're going to make it seven times hotter. It says in the Bible that they made it so hot that the dudes that went to go throw them in died instantly. They burned up. They didn't even get in the fire. They were just standing way off from a distance trying to throw them in, and they died right there instantly. It was so hot. That's a hot fire. That's like better than the best bonfire that you've ever seen. And so they throw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fire, and they're still walking around. The dudes that threw them in died, but they're just walking around chilling. You know, like the commercial, like not going anywhere for a while? Grab a Snickers. They're like pulling out Snickers, just eating them in the fire, just hanging out, just walking around. And then King Nebuchadnezzar and all the people watching, because they're wanting to see this go down, they see a fourth guy walking around. 
God was with them in the fire. God is with you in school. Sometimes it feels like you're alone. Sometimes it feels like you're going through the fire. But I just want to encourage you. God is with you. When you're going through that stuff, it might not feel like it, but he is with you. They pull them out of the fire and it says that not even a single hair on their head was singed. Their clothes didn't even smell like smoke. When I do bonfires, my wife makes me take off my coat and my jacket. She makes me take a shower uh, after we do a bonfire because she doesn't like the smell in her house. They didn't even smell like smoke. I like that smell, by the way. But they didn't even smell like smoke. So they're like, they are freaking out. What is going on here? And Nebuchadnezzar went to the door of the roaring furnace and he called in, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the high. God, come out here. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego didn't need another invitation to walk out of the fire. You know what I'm saying? It's like, all right, I'm out of here. Peace. And so they walk out of the fire. And all the important people, the government leaders, the king's counselors, gathered around to examine them and discovered that the fire hadn't so much as touched the three men. Not a single hair on their head was singed, not a scorch mark on their clothes, not even the smell of fire on them. Verse 28, Nebuchadnezzar said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I love that. I'm going to say that again. Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Your friends at your schools, in your neighborhoods, they don't know God. A lot of them don't know God at all, but they know you. What if you just started making the name of Jesus famous and they're like the God of John Holm? I don't know God, but I know John Holm, and I think John Holm is awesome. Like, that dude loves people like none other. Man, there's just something, I just want to be around him. When I'm around him, I just want to be around him some more. Like, there's just some awesomeness flowing out of Pastor John Holm. I don't know God, but I know John, and he's awesome. So God must be awesome. You know what I'm saying? You fill in your name in the blank. The people, when you're around at school, people be like, I don't know, I don't know God, but I know you, and I know that you're awesome. So your God must be awesome. And Nebuchadnezzar says that. He said, blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He didn't say blessed be God. He said the God of. You see, when you live and you love and you care for people and you pray for people, people will notice and make a difference. You want to know why so many people showed up at Monday Night Jam? They didn't know God, but they know the people putting it on. They said, that's pretty awesome. They're pretty awesome. So I want to get to know their God. So he says, the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, he sent his angel and rescued his servants who trusted him. They ignored the king's orders and they laid their bodies on the line rather than serve or worship any God but their own. Therefore, I issue this decree. Anyone, anywhere of any race, color, or creed who says anything against the God of, there it is again, the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego will be ripped to pieces limb from limb. This guy is sadistic. He's throwing people in the fires and he's ripping people limb from limb and their houses will be torn down. There has never been a God who can pull off a rescue like this. Come on, somebody. Yes. And guess what? Check this out. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. You want to know something I didn't know in high school? The reason why I was so good at football, I was a wide receiver. The reason why I was so good is not because I was awesome. You know why God made me good at football? Because it wasn't about my skills. It was about making his name famous. He gave me that talent. You want to know why you're so popular, those of you who have influence here tonight? It's not because you're so awesome. Can I just tell you, can I just propose something that I didn't know? It's because God gave you that influence. At the end tonight, I want to call out all the influencers. Campus pastors, I want them to call out the influencers, and I want to pray over them tonight. I want to pray over those of you who have influence at your school, maybe on the sports team or in the drama club or whatever it is that you do, you have influence. And I want to pray over you. God gave me a heart, and he gave me a word for the influencers that God wants to use your influence to make the name of Jesus famous. That's why he gave it to you in the first place. He made you good at what you're good at, middle schooler, high schooler. 
He made you have the friends that you have because he wanted to give you that influence so that you not could make your name famous, but so you could make his name famous. I mean, let me just like run that by you one more time. I don't know if you're getting it because I'm just feeling like a come on somebody coming up inside of me. God didn't give you the influence, the talents, the skills, the abilities. I'm the man, I'm the woman. He didn't give you all of that for you. He gave you that for him. It's not about you. It's not about you at all. It's all about him. And guess what? When you make his name famous, guess what's going to happen? The king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. God will bless you. He will promote you. What we had happen at our school, Monday Night Jam, wasn't about us at all. It wasn't because we were awesome or, or we were great or because we knew how to worship or I knew how to preach. It had nothing to do with that. It had everything to do with Jesus because I didn't know what in the world I was doing. I was the world's worst preacher. I've just practiced enough that somehow I can kind of talk in front of people now. But it was just because God was awesome and he was in that place and we were making his name famous. And when you make his name famous, he will give you more influence. He will give you more of a platform. He will use you in major ways. Can I tell you some stories? These students that I'm going to tell you about, every single one of them, I texted them and I said, will you pray? Will you fast for the students here of Custom Student Ministry? Will you pray for them and fast for them that they would get this? God is doing something in our cities around our area in some crazy ways. And I want their stories. I'm going to end out by sharing their stories. I want their stories to inspire you tonight. Because when we stand up, when we stand up and differentiate ourselves amongst the crowd, when we stand up, we stand out. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stood out. When we stand up, we stand out. And when we stand out, guess what? We make the name of Jesus famous. When we stand up, we stand out. And when we stand out, we make the name of Jesus famous. So I have uh, one uh, student that I want to tell you about. His name is Ryan Wojtacek. Ryan is a young man who is making the name of Jesus famous in his school, Tremper High School. Ryan, uh, a year ago, I challenged something similar with a card just like this uh, for him to begin to pray for and fast for friends in his school, in his sphere of influence, he's an influencer. He is someone who has popularity at his school. He's a runner, both in cross country and track. Ryan is praying for you tonight. But I have five friends listed on the back of this card, and he filled up the card with probably about 25 to 35 names. He didn't just use the five spots. He, he wrote a lot of names of friends that he was going to pray for. One of those names was his cousin, Kevin Shike. He prayed for those friends. He committed for a month to pray and to fast for them and to invite them. I'm encouraging you to invite these friends that you're about to write down on on this card to invite them to the next one night, to fill this place up. A thousand students, that's the vision. I said, Pastor John, what do you want to see? He says, I just want to see us reach our potential. I believe that a thousand students in this room is no problem. Across the campus is no problem. Ryan wrote those names down. One of those names that he wrote down was his cousin, Kevin Chike. Kevin was a partier. You think about the worst kid at your school, like the one that's the biggest drug dealer, the one that's the most impossible. Like you think, like if there's anyone that's not going to come to Jesus, it's going to be them, right? You know that person? You guys, all of us, even the youth pastors and the youth leaders, you know some kids. Like, like if there's someone that's impossible to come to Jesus, people feared Kevin Chike. He was a partier to the max. He was out of high school. He was throwing his life away. He was doing every drug imaginable, and he was dealing every drug imaginable. But God, last Easter, grabbed a hold of Kevin. And Kevin, after a month of praying and fasting, Ryan rallied up friends and family to pray and fast for Kevin with him. After a month of praying and fasting, within that time, Kevin gave his life to Jesus. Every addiction to drugs, gone. God completely, radically, uh, just like no more drugs. No more addiction to cigarettes. Can I just tell you something? When we stand up, we stand out. When we stand out, we make the name of Jesus famous. Ryan made the name of Jesus famous in his friend's life, in his cousin's life. Kevin is now preaching God's word everywhere he goes. He's leading his old drug running buddies to Jesus. He has a passion. He's sharing the the love of Jesus and leading people to Jesus everywhere he He's now a leader with us. 
Kevin is standing up and he's standing out and he's making the name of Jesus famous. He's making up for lost time in high school. Can I also tell you that Ryan has been inviting at his high school, Tremper High School, there's been a group last year. It was kind of like an FCA type group, uh, a, a Bible club type group that met at his school. He was leading that group or he was part of that group, and there was about three to five students. And this year, there's 60, uh, 40, 50, and 60 students coming. We've had, as, uh, if we counted all the names that have come through the campus life, there's been a, about 150 students that have come to this campus life where they're preaching the name of Jesus in the high school. And he brought a couple of friends with him, a couple of friends that, that Ryan, quite frankly, used to do drugs with and party with. He stood up. He stood out. He said, you're coming with me to Campus Life. That's what we call it at, at the campuses. He invited them, three friends, JC, Nick, and one other student. I don't remember his name all of a sudden. Um, but he invited them to come. Mitch was the other student. He invited them to come and, uh, and be a part of Campus Life. And I remember the week that they came. This is about a month ago. I remember when they came, and I remember Mitch giving his life to Jesus. I remember Nick walking out with fighting back the tears. Both of these kids, very popular, very influential at Tremper High School. And I remember them giving their life to Jesus. And Nick uh, and, and Mitch and JC got radically changed for God, like radically changed for God. And Mitch now has been inviting his friends. Can I just tell you something? The ripple effect of this, when we stand up, we stand out. When we stand out, we make the name of Jesus famous. The people that are coming to know Jesus isn't just one, but then they're making the name of Jesus famous. And they're making the name of Jesus famous. And it's exploding in the schools. It's exploding in our youth group back home. It's amazing. What God is doing through Mitch's life, we have a picture of Mitch with all of his buddies and the people that have been coming to know the Lord through Mitch. He just shared his testimony a couple of times back home, and I'm telling you, literally dozens and dozens of people have come to know Jesus or turned their life back to God. Prodigals have come back to God as a result of Mitch's story, and it all started with a kid named Ryan who started writing some names down and started praying and fasting, started saying, I'm not going to make my name famous anymore. It's not about me. It's not about me smoking weed and looking cool and being the homecoming court. It's not about that anymore. It's about making the name of Jesus famous. That inspired, um, that inspired actually 25 plus people have come to know Jesus in that campus life in the last couple of months as a result of some people saying it's not about me anymore. Karina was inspired to start making the name of Jesus famous at her school. Karina's a young lady that has gotten radically saved back in January, and she's saying, I want Jesus to do something like that, like he did through Ryan and through Mitch. I want him to do something like that at my school. And so she's been bringing her friends at every one night and friends night that we have. She's bringing them left and right. She's saying, you're going to find Jesus like I did. She's a student that has influence. I I want to tell you the story of a a kid named Caleb who said the same thing. They both go to school together, Karina and Caleb, and they're making the name of Jesus famous, and they're bringing every friend. Caleb just brought a friend to our youth group this last week that he said, I want Jesus to be famous in his life. He just texted me three other names of kids that he wants me to pray and fast with him that Jesus' name would be made famous in their lives. God is doing something in Kenosha, Wisconsin, and all of the cities around us in a major way, and I just believe that God wants to do something here. Dylan is another kid. He literally has asked for our vans, and he's asking for his own bus to bring all of his friends. He lives in this little podunk town like 30 miles away when we have our friends' nights. He's loading them up, and in fact, on regular youth group nights, he's just saying, I need more vans. I need bigger vehicles to bring them myself. One kid is bringing a whole car loads and van loads of people. Come on, somebody. And it's a ripple effect. And it's something that I want to ripple all the way to South and North Carolina. I want to ripple to custom student ministries. And you know why they're praying and fasting for you? Because they are addicted to making the name of Jesus famous. And they want you to experience that. And they want you to become addicted to it. They want you to feel the feeling that they felt. Because when we stand up, we stand out. And when we stand out, we make the name of Jesus famous. I want you to stand up with me all across the campuses. I want you to stand up. I want you to just close your eyes and I want you to just imagine for one moment with me. Across all the campuses. Close your eyes for just a second. I want you to imagine 
Remember when you were a little kid and you used to just daydream in class or when your mom was talking to you? Oh, wait a second. We don't do that when our mom is talking to us. And, 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 and you just would close your eyes and you dream up things. I want you to do that with me right now. I want you just to imagine. Imagine if you wrote these names down on this card. I want you to imagine like I got to actually experience that friend coming with you this next week or this next month, the next one night. Imagine that. You invite them and they come. You pray for them for a month. You fast for them. Give up things that are important to you for things that are important to God. That's what fasting is. Just keep your eyes closed. Imagine. Imagine you get some other people like Ryan did to fast and pray with you. Just ask some friends, some family, some people in your, in your small group, your, your leaders, your pastors. Just fast with me for them. Imagine them coming with you. I want you to imagine them walking down to the front and giving their life to Jesus the next one night. I want you to imagine. Imagine if this room was full. Imagine if your campus was full. Not just with a bunch of people, but with your friends. Imagine if the influencers at your school, the Kevin Chikes, the ones that you think are impossible, God gives you the boldness to walk up to them and invite them, and they come, and they get radically changed. And then they lead someone else to Jesus who leads someone else to Jesus. Imagine 600 people from your school worshiping God together in your high school or middle school auditorium. Imagine you leading it and probably being scared to death, wetting yourself because you're like, how am I going to do this? Imagine God doing something huge and massive through your life because you said, I want to make the name of Jesus famous. I want to stand up and I want to stand out. God, I pray that you'd help us to imagine. God, I pray that you'd help us to see what you see. I pray, God, that you would help students all across the campuses and all across this room, Jesus, to become addicted to making your name famous. God, cause our hearts to be stirred. And God, give us a vision for what you want to do. God, place inside of our hearts a passion to pray and to invite our friends here to one night. God, give us a vision of what it would be like to lead them to you and to pray with them. God, help us to imagine and help us to stand up for you, even when it's hard. God, we want to make your name famous. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.